Hello, my name is John Tennyson. I'm a docent here at the California Automobile Museum, where we have 150 cars on exhibit that tell the history of the automobile and how it affected our society. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about this 1914 Hupmobile Model 32. Now, you say, what is a Hupmobile? Well, the Hupmobile was named after Robert Hupp, who uh, developed the car in 1909 as a prototype. And Henry Ford said that this car was a great car for the value. By 1911, it was one of the first all-steel cars made in the United States. But uh, the Hupmobile had an interesting look. And the look is almost Italian or European-like. Particularly notice these headlamps. And they're electric, by the way, not gas like a lot of older cars of that era. They stood up high, um, uh, somewhat above the radiator, and the hood, unlike most headlamps on cars of that era that were further down. So you could recognize a Hupmobile from a distance, whereas most other cars sort of look boxy and, and alike. Also, the Hupmobile has right-hand drive, as many cars of that era had. Um, by the end of the teens or end of World War I, most cars had moved the steering uh, column in the United States to the left-hand side. The car also has uh, cut down doors and a lower silhouette um, compared to many cars of that era. So it has a sort of a European flavor. Uh, additionally, it has the traditional motor meter, which is like a temperature gauge on the radiator. It's like an old fashioned thermometer that your mother put under your tongue if you had the flu with mercury in a tube that would uh, shoot up uh, in a red fashion, so it would indicate whether uh, you had a temperature and, of course, in the case of an automobile, whether it's going to boil over. But the Hupmobile is important for many reasons uh, because it represents um, many of the independent automobile manufacturers of that time. It's been estimated that between 1900 and 1915, there were some 2,600 automobile manufacturers in the United States alone. Many of them never got past the blueprint stage. Many of them never got past the prototype stage. And of course, many of them went bankrupt uh, even before 1920 or merged with other companies or were swallowed up by uh, conglomerates such as General Motors. So the story of the Hupmobile is basically the story of the independent car manufacturers. And this was one make that lasted for about 40 years until 19. 39. Hupmobile started as a basically entry-level car, more expensive than a Model T, but by the 1920s they were going upscale with eight-cylinder rather than four-cylinder engines to compete with the likes of Pierce Arrow and Cadillac and Lincoln and so forth. And that was a very successful strategy in the 20s because the 20s was a very uh, prosperous uh, time until late 1929 when the Depression began. And in 1928, uh, Hupmobile sold 70,000 cars, which was a record for that make. But after that, it was all downhill. There were a series of stockholder disputes, attempted takeovers, and by 1939, the story was over. So when you come into the Automobile Museum, we'll tell you the backstories of all these cars and how uh, it affected the industry and society. Thank you for watching.